Hey, so I've been using Ansible for a number of years now. And one of the things that's always frustrated me about using Ansible is let's say that I want to use Ansible to configure the EC2 instances in my AWS environment. So I need to get the AWS EC2 inventory plugin, configure that in Ansible, and then I can write my playbooks to target that. And the docs do a really, really good job of explaining that, but only if I know that there's such a thing called the AWS EC2 inventory plugin, and I know that Ansible has a plugin system and how it works, and I know how to get Bodo3 up and configured and running with the right credentials on my system. That may not be things that we can take for granted. So in this video, I'm gonna show you from the ground up how to manage your EC2 instances in Ansible. Let's go do it. Okay, so let me get you started here by taking a little bit of a look at my AWS environment. Um, I've got a couple of instances here. There's only one running at the moment. Its name in AWS is Web1. Really nothing spectacular about it. It's an EC2 instance. The thing I wanna show you though is on my tags here, I've got uh, a couple of tags here and I don't like the way these sort this, it sorts these out because here's what I do for tagging. Think of the acronym INSERT, right? We've got N, S, E, R, and T. Kind of spells out INSERT, right? That gives us our name, service, environment, role, and team. And if you follow that acronym, over the years, it has proven to be a pretty reliable model for me in determining or creating a way to name and tag all of my EC2 instances in a way that I can manage them. So our name is Web1. The service is Ansible Demo because that's this video we're doing. The environment is Dev. The role is Web Server. And then the team is DevOps. Now, if you think about your organization, you can use these tags to name and categorize all of your EC2 instances. And then whenever you write playbooks, like to install Nginx, right? Then you can run that playbook against all servers in EC2 that have a role tag with the value of web server. So one more quick introductory piece here before we jump right into the code. I'm gonna be working from this repo that I created for this video, which I will link down below in the description so that y'all get access to it. And we're just pretty much gonna follow along the readme here. So you'll have the written version of it and then my rambling narrative over the top of it if you're watching the video. All right, so let's start off. The very first thing we need to do is create a Python virtual environment. Now, if you're not familiar with virtual environments, that is an, an isolated Python instance that you can install packages into that don't get impacted by any other Python installation on your system. So we do that with the Python 3 using the module venv and then the dot env right here is the name that we give to our virtual environment. Now that that's been created, we want to source that, which kind of means that we're going to turn that on and start using it. So we use uh, dot env bin activate. And now you can see the very first part of my cursor here has switched to this dot env inside of parentheses telling me that I'm using a virtual environment. I can also do which Python, and that tells me that I'm using the Python executable inside that virtual environment. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is install my dependencies that are required by Ansible, and I'm gonna do that using pip install, pip being the Python installer, and then tell it to install everything that's listed in the requirements.txt file. So while that's doing that, I'll pop over here and show you the requirements.txt file. This has the version of Ansible that we want, as well as its dependencies, including Bodo and Bodo3 and Bodo Core, which are all required to talk to AWS. Okay, so Ansible is now configured, and now we've got to install 
the dynamic inventory plugin so that our Ansible installation knows how to talk to the EC2 instances in AWS. And we're going to use the Galaxy plugin for that. So let's make some screen real estate here. And we're going to do Ansible Galaxy is our command. We're going to install a collection using the install verb or something like that. TLDR, we're installing Amazon.AWS collection. And I've already installed it, so there was nothing to do. But if you didn't have it installed, you would see some really cool stuff flashing by on the screen, right? All right, the next thing you got to have is your EC2 configuration file. And you can use the one that comes with the repo here. You may have to adjust it a little bit for your needs. For example, I've got the regions locked down to US West 1 and 2 because I don't really have anything else in AWS um, in this account. The other thing that's worth noting here is we've got this key groups section here. And basically it's going to create some groups based on these types of um, or these parameters. So it's going to create groups based on tags, which as you saw is very important to me in the way I run my AWS systems. It's also going to create tags based on instance types. So if I want to target a specific type of instance, I can do that as well as region. I'll show you what all of that looks like here in just a minute. So now we can run the Ansible inventory command. I'm going to pass it the dash I flag, which stands for inventory, and point it to that AWS EC2 YAML file that I just showed you, and then give it the graph option here. And then whenever this comes back, what we're going to see is a list of all the EC2 instances in my AWS environment. Now, whenever I showed you the EC2 console, there were only like four there, but we've got a whole page and then some uh, on this output here. So what's going on here? So it kind of grouped everything, you know, just like I showed you it was going to. Here are just the raw EC2 instances. Here's all four of those EC2 instances. But if I wanted to look at them by AWS region US West 2, they're grouped that way as well. Um, they're also grouped by the instance type and then the key thing here is if we go down to that one specific running instance I showed you at the beginning of the video, here it is. It's tagged by name web one. It's also tagged by the role of web server and tagged by the service and the team and so on. So what we've done there is we've used Ansible with the dynamic inventory in EC2 to pull a list of all the EC2 instances in my account. And it's dynamic though, right? So I could go launch another instance and run this same command and that new instance is going to come back in the inventory command. So I don't have these config files that I have to drag around with me and update every time an EC2 instance dies or is launched, which is pretty cool, right? Let me show you one more thing here. I can run the Ansible command and then using what we saw in that output, I can target the EC, all the EC2 instances that have a tag named role with the value of web server. Got to tell it where my inventory is though, right? And then I can give it the Ansible ping command. All right, cool. So now that failed, right? Because what Ansible does is whenever you tell Ansible to go out on one of my remote servers and do something, it's going to SSH into that server and then execute the commands that you give it on that server itself. So by default, it has to have SSH access to that server, which this doesn't currently. And now part of that's because of the way that my system is set up. You know, I work with a lot of different AWS environments and have a lot of different keys that I use. So it's very rare that my default keys will work, but that's okay because Ansible gives us some options for dealing with that. For example, I can pass the dash U flag and tell it, hey, when you SSH in here, SSH in as the um, user called EC2 dash user. I can also tell it which SSH key to use by giving it the path to a specific um, SSH key that's installed on my system. So now if we run that, 
it comes back and everything is green and the uh, the ping module all it does is just ping pong so it sends ping and then the server sends back pong if everything was successful not really a lot of value in that other than letting you know that you have good connectivity all the way through to that server okay so one other thing that's required there not only do you have to have ssh access but also to pull down that inventory you have to be able to use the aws api which because this is all written in python relies on the bodo3 library and the bodo3 library requires you to have the aws access key and aws secret access key configured on your system now i can't show you that on my system because you know that would be bad that would be exposing my aws environment but I will link out from this GitHub repo to the docs for installing that on your system if you don't have that already configured on your system. Let me show you one last thing here, and that's an example playbook. And playbooks are where the real power of Ansible comes in. So we've got a playbook here, and again, this is all written just in YAML. Um, the name of it is Ansible Test Playbook. The host, so here's where it gets interesting. Back whenever I ran that inventory graph, it showed us all of the different host configurations or host groupings that we had. I can put any one of those here, and when this playbook runs, it's going to target every host that meets that criteria. So again, in this video, we've been picking on the server that has the role tag set to web server. So if I've got one of those or 10 of those or 100,000 of those, when I run this playbook, it's going to perform these tasks. Now this task here just runs the echo hello world command, which is no big deal. But think about the things that you can have it do. You can have it do yum updates. You can have it install Nginx. You can have it add user accounts, install SSH keys. All of the sysadmin tasks that you have to do on a day after day basis can now be automated. So let me show you what it looks like to run that playbook. So we're gonna use the Ansible playbook command this time. And then again, gotta give it our AWS inventory path. Have to tell it that I wanna log in as the EC2 user. Have to give it the path to my private key. And then if I did all that right, I can give it the name of the playbook to run hit enter and so it's going to go pull the list of inventory from AWS and then start executing that and now it doesn't really show any output from this because that's not its job it's not to entertain you it's to go do something on that system but what it does do is look at the exit codes from all of the servers that it logs into if it gets a successful exit code it will set the counter here to OK for that system and then of the total number of systems that were in inventory, it will tell you how many of those it changed, which brings up a really good point. Ansible is idempotent or idempotent or however you want to say it. It's a cool sounding word that just means it makes sure that things are like they're supposed to be. Let me give you an example. If you install Nginx and then pass along your Nginx config, it defines your web directory and the server directives and things like that. Every time you run Ansible, it makes sure that that's the exact state that that system's in. If it's not in that state, it's going to do whatever it has to do to put it in that state. Um, but if it's already in that state, it's not going to do anything to it at all. So that's why, um, that's why we recommend or say that it's safe to run Ansible as much as you need to because if the system is configured like you've defined it, then you can continuously run Ansible and you're not going to cause any harm. The beauty of that is if you're ever in an unknown state with any of your systems, you just run Ansible and that puts it into a known state for you. So there you go, Ansible in, I don't know, I was like 10 minutes maybe. But um, the thing that we did here is I brought you into Ansible from the perspective of, hey, I want to do this thing, not from, hey, how do I use this very specific named function in Ansible that you, that you probably don't know the name to. If you got any questions, if you have any comments, 
uh, any of that type of stuff, leave them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you. And then other than that, I will see y'all in the next video.